All right, guys, you just saw the announcement. Here it is, the all new Leica M11P. I've had it in my hands for the past few weeks. We're gonna talk about this, what are the differences between the M11, M11 monochrome, and one new attribute to this camera that is different from any other camera in the marketplace at the time of this recording. Let's talk about these differences right now. First and foremost, we have no red dot on the front. That's the same as every other P variant out there in the M series of cameras. Second, we have the script on the top plate. Oh, that beautiful white script is there. The same as we see on every other P variant of cameras. Well, I will say almost every other P variant of the M cameras. On the back of it, we have made in Germany, right next to the viewfinder there. And 256 gigabytes of storage inside versus the 64 and the M11. And that's pretty much it. Those are the real big differences. Now, if you're wondering, is the coating, is the texture of the paint the same as the M11 monochrome? The answer is no, it is not. It is the same as the M11. I was hoping we were going to get that M11 monochrome finish because I absolutely love that finish. It's textured, it's thick, it feels very robust. I love that. We're not getting it here, unfortunately, but it is what it is. Not a deal breaker, just something to keep note of. Outside of that, no real differences, folks. Color science is exactly the same. Processor is exactly the same. Sensor is exactly the same. It's, I mean, look, they did such a good job with the M11 in terms of feature sets. There's not really much they could add to the P except for one thing. And this one thing does make it a very unique camera in the marketplace at the time of this recording, and that is the implementation of the Content Authenticity Initiative. Now, what is this exactly? All right, so what you can do, I'm gonna show you this inside the camera here. It says content credentials on, sign content on. So underneath there, you can add your information, the name, I have my name there, I put M11P, et cetera, et cetera. I can, you can put whatever you want, you can type it all in on, on the screen. And what this does is it gives your image a fingerprint. Now this fingerprint stays with the image throughout edits, throughout sharing on various different platforms. And the reason this initiative exists, obviously with AI and the way people are manipulating and taking images from the web, this sort of gives you ownership. So if somebody does take your image, they use it for commercial purposes or AI or whatever have you, and you see it, you go, hey, wait a second, that's my image. They say, how can you prove it? Now you can. Now this is a great initiative and I like where this whole, like this community is going. And there are other members to it, of course. We have Canon and Nikon part of it, but we don't have Sony nor Fujifilm at the time of this recording. Adobe is one of the big attributes to it, uh, Microsoft. Apple's not part of it at this point in time. Neither is Capture One. So I guess more people will be part of this initiative as it grows. But at the time of this recording, it's quite limited. Now, if you look on the website, there's a video and I'll kind of give you some screenshots of what it kind of, it shows you how it works in the sense that when the social media companies become part of this, if they do, um, let's say you post an image on Instagram, for example, there will be an eye icon to the top right of the image. And you click on that and it will tell you kind of the history of the image of like, who's the owner, it hasn't been edited. It won't tell you the exact edits, but it'll tell you has it been edited, et cetera, et cetera, and where it's been shared. So it'll give you sort of like a, a little bit of a history of that image. So if you're worried about if someone's gonna steal your secret sauce in terms of edits, no, it's not. But you will see some information. Now in Photoshop, you will see some information as well. And of course they're doing that now with, uh, you know, generative fills, you know, to tie that into sort of AI, like has your image been manipulated by AI or not? That's also in there. So on top of that, you're also gonna see this information. However, there are some questions I have to this. First and foremost, if Apple and Google are not part of this initiative, and hopefully they will be, if you screenshot an image, and I'll show you what that looks like right now, all that information is gone. And nowadays with screenshots being quite high resolution, it's easy to screenshot an image, share it on the web, and no credentials belong there unless you find that image on the web and say, wait a second, you can't use that, then you prove it. That might be the only way you can defend yourself. Now, maybe if Apple and Google become part of this and they implement this kind of technology inside the screenshot software, that will probably protect you for the most part, but I don't know. I mean, I think it's a great step in the right direction and I fully support it because I think now with AI and as I mentioned, other ways people are just taking and manipulating images. We need to have ownership out there more so than ever. I don't know where it's gonna go as of yet, but it's very cool that Leica is at the forefront of this technology and putting it here in the M11P. So that's the real differences between the M11P, the M11 and the M11 monochrome. Now, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about my experience with the M11P because in essence, it's an M11, but you know, using M glass on an SL2, SL2S, as I've been doing for quite some time and going back to an M series digital camera, I've got some issues with Leica in terms of this. And look, I love Leica cameras. I collect M film cameras. I have about five or six and other cameras as well. So I am a big fan of this, this design, the system and everything else. But when it comes to the M11, I kind of feel like we're ready to go into an EVF version of this camera system. Case in point, this Vizoflex 2, there have been a number of 
discussions about it, let's put it that way, out there on the web in terms of the resolution that you're getting out of this, the price point that you're getting out of this. Now, of course, I understand because with the battery inside this camera and you attach like a high resolution EVF, it's going to drain the battery tremendously. It's going to be very difficult to use it for a longer period of time. So you're sort of limited to the resolution, I'm guessing, in terms of the information I have with this EVF versus putting, let's say, a 5.76 or 9.44 million dot EVF inside of this. However, if you want to put this on, let's say, an M10R, M10M, for whatever, it even gets even worse. But the usability of this in terms of having to move the crosshairs and it's very slow with the joystick, you can't just use the display like you can in live view mode without the EVF, it does make it quite cumbersome. And now we're seeing a lot more lenses coming from Leica that are you know, designed to be more close focused. The 35 1.4, the recent 50 1.4. With that said, is Leica designing this for just live view mode? I don't think so. Are they designing it to be used on the SL2 or SL2S or maybe even the rumored SL3? Or is Leica getting us ready for an EVF version of the M camera? And I hope that's what they're doing because I think it's time. The resolution that we're getting out there with our mirrorless camera systems for EVFs are is good enough for close focusing, critical focusing. Uh, the refresh rates are very high. They look fantastic. Years ago, I understand Leica's limitations on this saying, hey, look, optical is still the way to go. But as a lot of the M users are getting up there in age, there's some young M users as well. But for the most part, a lot of the customer base is getting up there in age. Eyesight's not as great as it used to be. An EVF M would be a fantastic option out there. I know the purists are gonna argue with me. Go ahead and argue with me. Do you still drive manual in your car from the 30s and 40s and 50s? Or do you actually, you know, use automatic? I'm sure you use automatic from time to time, why not? Why can't we have some of that inside this camera as well? I think that's what's coming. I hope that's what's coming. And I'm excited to see that. But as it stands right now, the M11P, I think, is going to be for those who are probably holding off on the M11, seeing what improvements were going to be going forward, and maybe got a taste of it with the M11 monochrome. I would say, if you don't want the red dot, you want more internal storage, this is the option to go with. I have an SL2S back there, right? Reporter. I really enjoy using the SL system for manual focus lens. The EVF, the ease of focus, moving the focus point around to where I want it to be the grip. I just really enjoy that. So I would say if you're one of those that needs this VisoFlex 2, I would say look at an SL2, SL2S, or maybe if the rumored SL3 comes out, we don't know. That's all rumors, all speculative. But if you are someone that doesn't need this EVF and you like the optical, go for this. I think it's a great camera, it performs beautifully. I like the colors out of this. I know some people don't like the M11 colors, but to me, it does resemble more of the M9 than not. And I kind of like where like it's got a little bit more character to the image out of the M series, but that's just me personally. Anyway, guys, those are my thoughts on the M11P. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. If you can't subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell. More content coming your way. Thanks again for the support and I will chat to you soon.